Good morning. How so good it is that you all have come here in person in the sanctuary, and those of you at home have joined us as well. We're all making this connection, communing with God and with one another. Jesus is in our midst. We are blessed. It is so important to make this connection. I'm so glad you're here. If you are at home, make plans to have some bread and juice ready for communion later, because everybody's welcome. Please rise for the call to worship. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in God. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord. We gather to worship the source of all love and life. We gather to feed on the very bread of heaven. Amen. Our opening hymn is, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, verses 1 and 2. a hole in the soul of all of us and we try to fill it up with all kinds of things but it doesn't truly satisfy the hole can only be filled by God we have gathered here to come before the one who can meet our deepest need whatever the powers of death and darkness have done to you this week whatever bondage you have experienced we are in the presence of the great deliverer you are set free. This is a new beginning. Your sins are forgiven. Your fears are cast forth. You are God's beloved child. So let us together sing in thanksgiving the song of Alleluia. brings down the dividing wall of hostility in all its many forms, that which keeps us separated from God, from one another, from our truest self. God gives us in Jesus peace, peace which passeth all understanding. Let's claim that peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Please be seated. It's time for our children's sermon. Thank you, Terry. And I've got some children here today. Hey, Maddie, Nikki, and Abby, how are you? 
It's over. Oh, Ryan's here, hiding behind the piano. Hi, Ryan. So good to see you. You, you, you warm my heart, the four of you. You really do. So let's, let's do a little Bible story remember, remembering. You remember in Genesis, the story of how Joseph and his 11 brothers all end up in Egypt. And because of these gifts that God gives Joseph, he takes a bad situation and becomes Pharaoh's right-hand guy and helps thousands and thousands of people keep from starving. That happens, and also all the Jewish, the Hebrew people end up in Egypt, but 400 years pass, and they've forgotten their history. And now the Hebrew people are Pharaoh's slaves. You know those pyramids you see? Those pyramids you can visit today? Well, that's the sort of thing that Pharaoh had them working on. And Pharaoh would make sure they had just enough food, just enough food so they would have enough strength to work, but no more. It was hard, hard living. They were not free. But God had a plan, and God called to Moses out of the burning bush, said, I have heard the cries of my people, the slaves under Pharaoh, and I have a plan to set them free. You are going to go with your brother Aaron to Pharaoh, and you're going to say, let my people go. God says, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who are you? It takes a while, but Pharaoh gets the lesson, and they are given permission to leave in a big hurry. But just then, Pharaoh changes his mind, sends his army after them. They cross through the Red Sea that separates Egypt from the wilderness. And then the, the Red Sea comes and washes away the soldiers of Pharaoh who are coming to make them slaves again. They're free! You'd think they'd be happy, right? You would think they would be happy. But, you know, the wilderness, the desert, is kind of hot, right? And there's not a lot of food growing there. And they start to get anxious, scared, like, where are we going to find food to eat? And they start complaining. You don't know anything about complaining, do you? <laughs> oh, we got some honest responses here. Yeah, we all know about complaining, and we all know about getting scared, too, right? They were scared that they were, they were going to get hungry. And they, but they were complaining and saying, I wish we'd never left. I wish we'd stayed back in Egypt as slaves. At least we wouldn't starve to death. Well, we felt that way sometimes, right? What's a good thing to do when you feel that way? Well, it occurs to me, one thing might be to just take a deep breath. <sighs> I'm feeling scared, God. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Admit it. Turn to God. And then try to remember, remember all the ways that God has blessed you. And they are many. For instance, you're alive. You didn't have to be alive. God wanted you to be alive. God said, here, have life. It's beautiful. That's one thing. And then the people who love you, that's something to be thankful for. Right? What else? Food? A roof over your head? All the ways that God has provided for you in the past can maybe give us a little courage when we get scared in the present. As it turns out, God hears their murmurings, their, their fear, and provides what's called manna from heaven, which is this bread that just sort of appears in the morning, every morning. And the people can have enough bread to eat each day, one day at a time. In a little bit, we'll be having Holy Communion in, in United Methodist Church. Kids are invited, everybody's invited. And as we receive that bread, we are getting nourishment for our bodies, but also for our spirits, for those times when we get scared. So we can choose to love rather than be overwhelmed by being afraid. 
because God's love is so big, so wide, so broad, which is why we always say, what do we say? There's always room in the circle. And now Joanne is going to bless us with a song to the glory of God. It's been so long since you had seen sunny skies Just up above those stormy clouds You know someone is looking down If only there were some way we could call on him Well, my friend, there is just put wings upon your problem And it becomes a prayer Lift your worries up to heaven Where Jesus hears and cares When burdens roll so heavy And oh, so hard to just put wings upon your problem And it becomes a prayer You have resigned yourself to feeling unloved Shackles and chains may bind your heart Oh, but above Jesus looks down and he sees A lost little lamb Who needs to rest in the arms of the shepherd The one who says, come on to me Put wings upon your problem And it becomes a prayer Lift your worries up to heaven Where Jesus hears and cares When burdens grow so heavy And oh, so hard to bear just put wings upon your problem And it becomes a prayer When those burdens grow so heavy And go so hard to bear Just put wings upon your problem And it becomes a prayer Upon your problem Just put wings Upon your problem Just put wings Upon your problem And it becomes a
Old Testament, one from an epistle lesson, one from a gospel, and some psalms too. This week, I heard a little something in three of the different lessons. So I'm doing a little, little different. I'm going to take a little piece of three different lessons this morning. And first, I want to start off with the Apostle Paul. He's writing to the Ephesians, and he's been talking about this incredible gift of grace that God has revealed in Jesus, this love so deep, so wide, so broad, that it takes down the dividing walls of hostility. And in the latter part of the, of, of the lesson, he begins to talk about how if we've received this gift, we ought to live lives that are in harmony with this reality. And there's this one verse, verse 15 from chapter 4, that I would highlight. He says, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. So this morning I want to talk about the theme of growing up. Every Sunday we watch this short little video of little Michael giving us the wave and how Jesus said, let the children come unto me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God, that unless you turn and become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So how do we put these two ideas together? How are we to grow up and be adults and, as Jesus said, turn and become like children? It almost seems like a contradiction. So let's take a moment to ponder these two words, child, an adult. I, I want to think about the positive and the negative associations that we have for these words. First, child. I think, well, we think a child, what's so appealing about you kids is your ability at times to live in the moment, not to worry about what's coming up, but to, to be able to play. Just give yourself over to play, right? You like to play? We like watching you play. And it's that capacity to be spontaneous, that capacity to have joy. That's what's so attractive about children, that lack of self-consciousness, the ability to play. So what are our negative associations with the word child? Hmm? Well, children, children can be brats. Right? You know, sometimes uh, complaining a lot. They can be sometimes kind of self-absorbed. You know, they can uh, not take responsibility. They can feel, pretend to be powerless when they're not really all that powerless. That's the negative associations with child. Okay, let's talk about adult now. What are the positive associations with adult? Well, I think we think of an adult in the positive sense as somebody who takes responsibility for their lives, right? Somebody who is reliable. Somebody who's not so self-absorbed that they can't take in the concerns of others. Somebody who has enough courage to do what needs to be done when life gets scary. That's an adult, right, in the best sense of the word. So what are the negative associations with an adult? Well, there are essentially all those things that are lacking that we love about children, right? The lack of spontaneity, the lack of capacity to think outside the box, the lack of ability sometimes to just let go and play. Always worrying about the problems that gotta be resolved. That's how it is for me sometimes, a lot of times. It's hard to stop and smell the flowers. That's the negative side about being an adult. So how do we grow up and hold these qualities, the best qualities of being a child and an adult together? I think our example is Jesus himself. Whenever Jesus was with somebody, he, he was fully present with them. His attention wasn't somewhere else. He was in the moment. And he loved a good party. He always talking about parties, always being at parties. 
and yet he was also the epitome of brave. And when I say brave, I don't mean never feeling the fear, but being able to act, to have courage to act even when you are frightened, because Jesus got frightened. Jesus wasn't, as we often can be, passive aggressive. Rather, as Paul said, he spoke the truth with love. Okay, I'm going to turn now to our Old Testament lesson. When we hear about the story I talked about the children with. How with a mighty hand God delivers the people of Israel, the, out, the Israelites out of their bondage, their terrible bondage to Pharaoh. And now they get out into the barren wilderness, which proves to be challenging. And we pick up the story in the 16th chapter, beginning in the second verse. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Did you catch that? Their fear of starving to death in the wilderness has led them essentially to rewrite their personal histories. Hey, life under Pharaoh wasn't all that bad. We got enough to eat. And somehow, Pharaoh, somehow Moses, you, you forced us to leave that supposedly comfortable life to come out into the wilderness when, in fact, they had freely chosen to go with them. They were not forced to. They don't want to take personal responsibility. They don't want to grow up. They want somebody to take responsibility for them, and particularly so that there'll be someone to blame when things get kind of tough. There's something very basic there about human nature. Maybe you recognize something of that in yourself. You know, the moaning and the complaining and the self-delusion and the need to blame somebody. Moses proceeds to consult with God. Continuing. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And that way I will test them. Kind of like the Israelites are in some sort of school. Whether they will follow my instruction or not. And so as the story continues... In the evening, there are birds, quails, that suddenly appear, providing them with protein to nourish their bodies. And in the morning, there's this flaky substance that just appears, the manna from heaven, bread from heaven. What is it? And Moses replies, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat, manna from heaven. So no, God meets them where they are in their childishness, providing for their basic needs. But there are things that God expects them to learn out there in the wilderness. And the first thing is simply to begin trusting day by day. Trusting God's presence with them. Every morning thereafter, this manna appears in the morning, they are to take enough for the day, not to try to store up manna for the next day. When they try to do this, what happens? It gets rancid. The point being much like the one that Jesus would later make, years later, up on the mountaintop, on the Sermon on the Mount, when he says, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So let us keep our focus on God. Keep clear 
keep clear about what truly matters in life and what doesn't really matter. The Israelites would end up wandering 40 years in the wilderness. And you know the old joke, why did the Israelites wander in the wilderness for 40 years? Well, because they were led by men, they wouldn't ask for directions. There's some truth to that. An aspect of pride was involved there. But the 40 years in the wilderness was intentionally seen in the, the story as this time of spiritual preparation for life in the promised land. A kind of school to learn how to live faithfully, if you will. And I would suggest to you that you and I are in the same school, and it lasts a lifetime. In the story we highlighted this morning, we see the Hebrew people acting like children at their very worst, whining, complaining, intimidated by their fears. They need to relearn both that childlike quality of living in the moment, which requires trust, but they also need to learn how to take responsibility for their actions. At the end of their wandering through the wilderness, just as they are about to enter the promised land, Moses essentially gives what sounds very much like a commencement speech in which he lays out this challenge to the Hebrew people about what they need to continue to focus on as they pass over into the promised land. He says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. In other words, take responsibility for the choices you make in the course of your journey. Make conscious choices because to choose not to choose is still a choose. To choose to pretend there's no choice is still a choose. Somebody I was talking to this, this week told me a moving story about coming to this moment in her life of clarity in which she could see what she hadn't seen as clear before, which was, on the one hand, there was fear and shame and guilt and anger, and on the other hand, there was life and joy and love, and there was a sense in which she had a choice. Which would she choose? And with that clarity, the choice was clear. Growing up involves taking responsibility for our choices and foregoing blaming. It involves, in Christ, finding that balance between letting go and mustering up courage, where courage is what's called for. And one of the best guides for the day-to-day -day process of growing up, I would suggest to you, is found in the serenity prayer, you know? God grant me the serenity to accept that which I cannot change, that is to refuse to let that part of ourselves run our life that would endlessly worry over all that's out of our control in the future. The courage to change that which I can. That is, to face down the demons of fear that often in our lives paralyze us and leave us in this passive state in relationship to the actions we are called to take in this world on our own behalf and for the behalf of others. And the wisdom to know the difference, and you can only have that wisdom if you pay attention. Pay attention to your life, moment 
by moment and resist the urge to live on autopilot. Okay, finally, let's briefly consider the gospel lesson that comes from John, which echoes the story we heard from Exodus. A little before, while before this passage, we hear how Jesus performs the miracle of feeding 5,000 people when a little child comes forth and offers up all that the child has. Five loaves of bread, two fish. It's enough to feed 5,000, turns out, and the hungry people with empty stomachs have their stomachs filled with bread. The boy himself is a pretty good example of us, right? He both trusts and he acts decisively to do what he can to share and to help. Pretty grown up, I'd say. But here now, the people are hungry again. And they've been searching for Jesus. And they find him. And they seem to be stuck in this anxious complainer mode, looking to Jesus to once more perform a miracle that will again fill their bellies with bread. And the people recall the story from Exodus of how Moses, with God's help, with God's, Moses as a vessel, provided manna from heaven day by day. And the reading ends this way. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. There are different ways to think about what happens when we share Holy Communion, which we will be sharing in a few minutes. I invite you, perhaps, to think of it this morning in a slightly new way. Think of receiving the gift of Jesus' body, symbolically in the bread, the bread of life, as something that can fortify your spiritual muscle. We take Jesus inside of us so we can find the courage to live as grown-ups in the very best sense of the word with the joy and open-heartedness of children. We claim the promise that he'll be with us always in all the scary times. And so as you receive the cup this morning, the bread, I invite you to be reflecting on the question, what would it mean for you to grow up? Because we all need to grow up. Please pray with me. Oh, Lord, these sacred stories from our faith are easy to identify with. It's easy to be with the children of Israel murmuring and frightened in the wilderness. But you indeed are with us. You are with us in the present moment, offering us courage. And you are calling us to see our life as a journey, to move more deeply and to trust and into courage as your beloved children. And in partnership with you as we would witness to your love that is greater than all the powers of death and darkness that we would in some mysterious sense embody the love of Jesus. Come now, Lord, and meet each of us at that place where you would call us to grow up in Christ in every way who is our head. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is Standing on the Promises, verse 2. Please, please rise.
So this is when we have our offering, but we're not yet passing our plates. I will place my offering on the altar. I am so grateful for all the ways in which you have supported our shared ministry of living out the good news of Jesus, of this love that's so deep and wide that it takes down the walls of hostility that have been so familiar to us. This love that is greater than all our fears. It's so important we share this with one another and with the world. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your financial gifts. Those of us present may make our offerings on your way as you depart. Those of you at home can mail in your offerings or go to the website and make an offering through PayPal. And thank you for those of you who have stepped up knowing that many of our sisters and brothers have lost income in these trying times. I'm grateful for your gifts, your prayers, and the sharing of your spiritual gifts as well. And our life is undergirded together with prayer, and that's the time now we are to pray together. Will you join me now in prayer? Thank you, O oh God, for the abundance of your grace that begins with this inhale of breath we're taking in this moment. It reminds us that you gave us life itself. This holy mystery that we so easily take for granted when we get into autopilot mode. We have gathered together this morning to take us out of autopilot that we might be mindfully present to your grace in this moment, this breath, and recognize again that our cup overflows that we have been graced in more ways than we can recognize. We would, however, try to name some of those blessings. We thank you for the beauty of the earth. We thank you for this planet that you've given us to live on, for the web of life. We thank you for people who've loved us on the journey, encouraged us, challenged us, forgiven us. And we thank you for those that you have allowed us to love. For in loving, we escape the prison cell that we often live in, of self-absorption. Thank you for the holiness, the mystery that is love. Thank you for music that stirs our hearts for our bodies and the capacity to sing and for the transformation that ha happens when we sing unto you, O oh God. We thank you for acts of bravery, big and small. We thank you this day for the courage of Raoul Wallenberg, who long ago saved thousands during the Holocaust. We thank you for the courage of people serving on the front lines of health care, for the first responders. And we thank you for the courage to have uncomfortable conversations that are needed to bring healing and reconciliation to speak the truth with love. We thank you for the saints who've gone before us. We thank you this day for the life of Dan Coughlin's mom, who went to be with you this past week. We thank you for the gospel, for this love that is the deepest truth. Lord, in your goodness, Mady shares praise that Gina and Nick found an apartment to live in. Continue prayers for their finances. And uh, joy to remember the life of Lois Kelshaw, who left this earth four years ago yesterday. We all still miss her still, but that love of hers, I think, still envelops this place.
Thank you, God, Thank for you. these sorry. gifts. Sorry, Jeff, I'm sorry. One just came through. Amy Deeks is thankful that her husband, Brian Bramley, is doing so well. Yesterday was six years since his aortic valve replacement and two years that he had his 25% of his colon removed. He's cancer free. Thank you, oh God, for the perseverance that we witness lived out among us. People quietly putting one step in front of another when life has been very hard. Witnessing to faith. You know us, oh God. You know us better than we know ourselves. You know our self-deceptions. You know the places where we're broken and stuck and blocked, not yet embracing the freedom that is ours as your children. In this moment of silence, O oh God, we would invite your Holy Spirit to descend into the hearts and minds and bodies of each one of us to meet us in that place of our deepest need, that place perhaps that keeps us awake at night, the places that haunt us. Come, Holy Spirit. And we exhale and let go and trust you, O oh God. Thank you that you are at work in our lives, beyond our comprehension, to lead us to the promised land, to lead us to your wholeness. And we thank you for the call and claim on our life that we might be vessels of your love, your healing, your reconciliation, your peace. We thank you for the gift of prayer. We raise up into your light and love persons and situations you've placed upon our hearts. We pray for Shelley's friend Jan in the hospital with apparent liver cancer and cognitive problems and for her need for a place to live. We pray for June Snetzer with liver issues and diabetes and anxiety. We ask a blessing on our beloved Barb who's been dealing with infection of, their, of a cyst, and for her mother, Doris, living with a lot of pain with her back. We pray for Karen Wilk, for healing physical and spiritual, and for our beloved Anna Weiss, who, grateful, is here today, as every Communion Sunday, to set the table for us. We pray for Neekin, recovering from his outpatient surgery, and Bob Adams' brother, Phil rehabbing from spinal surgery. And for Tom Albert's mother, who is in rehab now several weeks, trying to regain the ability to walk, trying to return home. Oh, Lord, bless her. We pray for Wa, grateful that she has returned safely from the Mayo Clinic and is here with us this morning and ask a blessing upon her. We pray for her friend O in rehab following a brain aneurysm. We pray for all those who are dealing with cancers and for all those who care for them. We pray for all those living in institutions that can be such difficult, lonely places. We pray for all who are grieving, including Eric Christiango's family, Frenny, Len, Dan Coughlin, Gina, and Nick. We pray for those seeking a place to live. We ask a blessing upon this opportunity that has arisen for Gina and Nick. We pray also for Sharon's friend, Kathy. We pray for all who are battling COVID. We pray for those who are grieving are having lost a loved one to COVID. We pray for mindfulness in the midst of the stress of the pandemic. We pray for places where the suffering 
goes far beyond uh, what we have known here, places like Brazil and India. We pray for courage and sustenance for the healthcare workers. We pray for our damaged earth and for all living beings, all people who have suffered from floods and forest fires and hurricanes. We pray for the people of Haiti and Cuba, the Palestinians and the Jews. We pray for peace and reconciliation and courage. We pray for those grappling with loneliness and the heavy weight of depression for families under stress, for reconciliation in families and in our nation, and for the capacity to truly listen and to love those who see the world differently from ourselves. Help us to see every single human being as sacred, O oh God, as your beloved child. Help us to turn from racism, the sin of racism, in all of its forms. Help us to turn from the way of violence in all of its forms. And we would pray for the little ones, the refugees, the homeless, the orphans. Lord, in your mercy. Mitty is asking for prayers um, regarding the sale of her house a long road for her. Anna Weiss starts physical therapy this week, prayers that it helps to get rid of the numbness in her leg. Pat Wins' grandson, Connor, is leaving for Paris Island today. He's starting, uh, he's joined the Marines and he's starting boot camp. Amy Deeks asks prayers for everyone suffering from anything and prayers for those that love and care for them. Richard Witter asks prayers for all his family and friends, church and everyone else, especially his wife as she ventures out today. Into your arms, O oh God, we raise these needs. Help us to trust you. Help us to recognize the opportunities we have to be the answer of prayers for others. Help us to follow in the way of Jesus, who invites us to the great gospel feast. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast, verses 1 and 3. I invite you to stand. Please be seated. As I said before, in the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion. All are welcome. You don't have to have your belief system all worked out. In fact, if you got all worked out, you need to be shook, shook up a little bit because that's the nature of life. Uh, it's an ongoing journey. 
What you need is a humility of spirit that recognizes you need a gift you can't give yourself. You need grace. You need, you need to be empowered by a power, higher power, which we call God, revealed to us in Jesus. And so all are invited to the gospel feast. And those of you at home, I invite you to join along. And hopefully you've got some bread and a cup. And you can commune with us as we commune together with Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Please join me, those of you who are at home, uh, as I invite you to take the bread as we bless it, and repeat after me. God, we thank you, or say it with me, it's up there. <laughs> God, we thank you for Jesus, who was broken, that we might be one. God, we thank you for Jesus, who gave his life, that we might have life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those who are at home, if there are more than one at home, I invite you to serve one another, saying, the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Those of you who are present with us in the sanctuary, a few words of instruction that are important to listen to, lest you end up with grape juice on your lap. You'll come forward as Connie invites you to receive one of these little containers. Take it back to your seat. There are two lids to it. I have gotten new information on the spot. <laughs> what is the new information, Barb? I am sitting here thinking of what would have happened, Barb, if you had not stepped in and given that <laughs> advice. It would have been a mess. Hopefully we would have had the childlike capacity to laugh, but we're glad that's not happening. So uh, we're going to be singing Amazing Grace as I invite now each of you has are so moved to come and receive. And after you've taken that all off, Connie will come by to take what's left over. Let's sing Amazing Grace. <clears throat> Tarry the body and blood of Christ. Ryan, the body of Christ, shed for you, and the blood of Christ, the body of blood shed for you. Mady, the body of Christ, broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Nikki, Abby, Maddie, Denise, the body of Christ, broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Jean, the body of Christ, broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Terry, Lori, the body of Christ, broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Donna, the body of Christ, broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Michael, the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Tracy, the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Wow, welcome home. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Jesus, 
Fred, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Connie, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And Barb, the body of Christ broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves for others. You have raised us with Christ and made us a new people. As people of the resurrection, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Amen. For the final benediction, we pause for announcements. There, there's going to be coffee hour, we think, in September. But right now, you have to have coffee hour on Zoom. And you who like to, to join, it's available. This afternoon at 1 o'clock, there is a memorial service for the Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg who bravely saved thousands of Hungarians, most of them Jews, during World War II. And there is a beautiful sculpture at the crossroads of Smith, Field, Smith Road, Baldwin Road, and 46, Smith Field. And uh, I'm going there to uh, honor his courage, and I invite you to join me. There is opportunity to connect on Zoom in the course of the week on Tuesdays with Joe and on Fridays with Betsy. I offer an opportunity to, for guided meditation and prayer to come to the quiet center on Wednesday and Thursdays at noon. The Administrative Council is meeting on Zoom this Tuesday at 7 o'clock to make decisions about our church moving forward in this challenging time. And the United Methodist women are going out to eat this Wednesday at uh, 6.30, I think it is. And Betsy needs to know by today if you're attending. Next Sunday, and here's a, a sign of coming back to normalcy, Allegro, those beautiful musicians that come and offer music during our worship will be joining us, including our own Eleanor Walsh. You won't want to miss it. We continue to ask if you've got a need for somebody to shop for you. We've got people who are willing to do it. Let us know. And we will have uh, our, our ongoing ministry to the homeless through Homeless Solutions, in which we prepare a meal uh, once every two months, is occurring on August 12th. We welcome donations to support this ministry. Thank you, Lori Wilkin, who is with us this morning, who helps lead that. Thanks for Tom and Justin, who prepare the meal. There will be a memorial service for Eric Christiangle's mother on August 14th at 11. All are welcome either in person or through Facebook Live. And we are scheduled for to take our turn with Interfaith Furnishings on Saturday, August 21st. And there is a need for volunteers. Any other announcements that need to be made today? Thank you again for your ongoing support and your financial gifts, your prayers, your love. Please rise for the final benediction. Go forth, mindful that you do not go alone, that the holy presence of God is with you that grace abounds, that you will have what you truly need, that you will be empowered as you ask for the grace to act courageously, that you will be set free to live 
fully in the present moment with love, that you will be empowered to speak your truth in love. Go forth to walk in the way of Jesus. In his name, amen.